Hello, dear traders. Wall Street closed the last trading week on a pessimistic note. Market sentiment turned sore, and the major stock indexes printed new one-year lows. Stock investors fear that the global economy is facing stagflation or a slowdown in economic growth amid soaring inflation. Last week, the flash estimate showed that the U.S. GDP contracted in the first quarter. It was the first decline in the gross domestic product since the lockdown was imposed in the second quarter of 2020. The risk factors this week remain the same – rampant inflation, rate hikes by major central banks and the geopolitical tensions. Besides, investors are keeping close tabs uh, on corporate reports uh, by top American companies. Watch this video till the end and share your opinion in comments. For the whole last week, investors digested macroeconomic data and reports on corporate earnings. None of them brought a surprise. Inflation expectations came in at 5.4 percent on year. Investors are alarmed by the preliminary U.S. GDP for the first quarter. According to the first estimate, the U.S. economy shrank 1.4 percent. Secondly, defined the forecast of a 1.1 percent increase. The second estimate of the U.S. GDP will be released on May 26. The U.S. GDP expanded by 6.9 percent in the fourth quarter, and now it seems that the IMF sugarcoated the state of affairs in the U.S. economy and presented other optimistic forecasts. The institution has already downgraded its forecast for the U.S. and the global economy, having slashed them both by almost 1 percent. Such revised forecasts serve as a touchstone for a variety of economic agents such as banks, investment firms and the markets. Sugar-coated uh, forecasts uh, disfigure the fair value of assets. A lot of them correlate clearly with the economic growth. Apart from that, the commodity sector seems to be losing production capacities. In this context, analysts say that extra risks have uh, popped up that could push the U.S. economy into recession. The U.S. stock indexes incurred heavy losses last week. The Dow Jones declined moderately last week. It closed 1.65 percent down on Friday. And the question is still open whether Wall Street will continue the bearish trend. The week is loaded with the high-impact events. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve is widely expected to raise the official funds rate by 50 basis points. Investors consider this move as a matter of fact. So, they will focus on the rhetoric of the Fed's chairman at his press conference. The market will try to figure out whether the regulator intends to keep on with its hawkish moves. At present, investors predict that the central banks will increase interest rates by 50 percent to 3 or 3.25 percent by the year end. The highlight of the week is the government data on the U.S. labor market. The U.S. public and private sectors could have added 395,000 jobs in April, following a 4,000, uh, excuse me, 431,000 increase a month ago. The unemployment is likely to remain flat at 3.6%. However, investors are most interested in the dynamic of a wage growth that is viewed as a barometer of a headline inflation. For the time being, American markets have stalled the decline with some signs of stabilization. Wall Street closed in the green on Monday, mainly because of a rising stocks in the high-tech, oil and gas and telecommunications sector. The S&P 500 shed 2.36 percent for the week. The index gained 0.57 percent on Monday after it had printed a new one-year low. In early May, the index sank below 4,100 points but did not stay there for long. 
The, on Tuesday, the S&P is trading at about 4,160 points with a slightly bullish bias. Investors will hardly bet on the full-fledged bullish trend on the current economic conditions. The market is not certain that the index will be able to recover to 4,400 points by mid-April. Investors monitor yields of the US Treasuries ahead of the Fed's policy meeting. Benchmark 10-year Treasuries challenged 3% for the first time since late 2018. If this scenario develops, analysts warn that stocks with a high price-to-profit ratio will be in trouble. Most of such stocks belong to high-tech giant with a large market capitalization. The current picture of the S&P 500 is the following. It settled below the 200-day moving average. This is the bearish signal, suggesting a further decline. Under the bearish scenario, the next support level is seen at 4,080 points. The Nasdaq looks the most pessimistic, having tumbled 3.25% last week. On Tuesday, it's a trading notably higher, having climbed more than 1.5%. Nevertheless, it does not improve the overall outlook because the index is not able to break above 13,000 points. The prospects of a high interest rates and tapering the Fed's balance sheet are not the only cases for the concern among investors. They are also worried about China. Its PMIs for April are way below expectations. Besides, tepid ISM manufacturing PMI for the United States did not cheer up market participants. The index fell to the weakest level in the two years due to backlogs in orders, the hostilities in Ukraine and lockdowns in China. Meanwhile, investors are keeping close tabs on corporate reports by top American companies. Last week, Amazon, Apple, Intel and Tesla reported on their corporate earnings. Apple reported stronger-than-expected results for the March quarter. At the same time, the company did not present economic forecasts, increased its dividends and announced a new share buyback program. The company said it was pleased about its upbeat financial results. Apple services, iPhone and Mac sales generated high revenue. Tim Cook boasted that their first quarter was memorable because of a large number of newcomers who bought iPhones and gave up Android gadgets. He also welcomed those who bought Mac PCs for the first time. Consumer could face a deficit of all Apple gadgets due to lockdowns and the shortage of silicon. Apple is um, running a risk of losing 4 or $6 billion in the second quarter due to the such um, bottlenecks. Apple stock is trading higher. On May 3, the stock is trading at $158 a piece. It has appreciated by 11% for the last four weeks and by 19% for the last 12 months. Apple stock is expected to trade at $153 at the end of this uh, second quarter and at um, $143 a year later. Follow developments in the US stock market on InstaForex TV channel, subscribe to our channel and feel free to leave your feedback and see you online soon.